BGMC. The biblical truth lives here. scriptures foretold of the anointed one, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Messiah Yeshua came to call the people back to the truth of His word and to follow that righteous path. Yeshua then called Jewish men to be His disciples, and after His death and resurrection, those Jewish men told the world about the Jewish Messiah. Now, after 2,000 years, Beth Goyim Messianic Congregation has that same calling of those Jewish men telling all people, both Jew and Gentile, about the proper ancient path, teaching the Route 66 King's Highway from Genesis through to Revelation, and how you need and can get back to the proper roots of the faith and a closer walk with God. Now, let's hear the message. Let's go get a blessing. Turn to the book of Bereshit, Genesis chapter 18. Vamos al libro de Génesis, capítulo 18. Genesis chapter 18, Bereshit chapter 18. Génesis capítulo 18, Bereshit capítulo 18. This is the City Gate Messianic Bible Study. Este es el estudio bíblico mesiánico de la puerta de la ciudad. Parasha number 4. Parasha número 4. It is entitled Be'er, meaning and he... And he appeared. Y se titula Bayera y, y, y se trans, tra, traduce, tra, oh my gosh, se traduce a apareció. I thought you went to Florida, you were supposed to get more Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> It was a Cuban Spanish. Yeah. All right, let's go on to the next slide. Vamos a la próxima diapositiva. Uh, In parasha number four, there's a lot of information. Hay mucha información en la parasha número cuatro. But what we're doing in uh, this uh, this cycle of the parasha, eh, lo que estamos haciendo en este ciclo de la parasha, we're focusing on one topic so we can understand the rest of the parasha. Nos estamos enfocando en un tema para poder entender el resto del parasha. And to understand redemption, para entender redención, we need to understand sinful behavior first. Necesitamos entender eh, el, el, el comportamiento pecaminoso. You, you can't understand why you need redemption. No puedes entender por qué necesitas redención until you understand what sin is and why you need that redemption. Hasta que entiendas lo que es el pecado y por qué necesitas esa redención. You know, many people believe that Messiah has come. Muchos eh, creen que ya el Mesías ha, ha venido. And they believe that he paid their price for, uh, for sin. Y, y ellos creen que él pagó el precio por sus pecados. But they don't know why they need to be redeemed. Pero no saben por qué necesitan ser Redimido. Going on to next slide. En la próxima diapositiva. Vaera or Vaera. Vaera is and he appeared. Y apareció. Is the fourth uh, weekly Torah portion. Es la porción de la Torah de, de, de la cuarta semana. It comes from the book of Bereshit, Genesis, Viene, chapter 18, verse 1 through chapter 22. Viene del libro de, de Bereshit, Génesis, capítulo 18, versículo 1, hasta el capítulo 22, versículo 24. There is so much information in those couple of chapters. Hay tanta información en ese par de capítulos. Um, that you can literally spend months just on that those singular topics. Que te puedes quedar ahí estudiándolo por meses en esos, en esos temas. But this is the fourth parasha. Pero esta es la cuarta parasha. Going on to the next uh, slide. Vamos a la próxima diapositiva. We're going to go through a summary Vamos a, a repasar of the whole parasha de parasha entero. And then we're going to go into the main point of sin that led 
that you have to understand sin. Y vamos a entrar al punto principal de, de entender el pecado. So that you can understand why you need redemption. Para poder entender por qué necesitas ser redimido o redención. Because if you don't believe that your life is sinning against the kingdom. Porque si no, si no crees que tu vida está pecando en contra del reino. Or that you're not really sinful. O que en verdad no, no eres pecaminoso. Or that the dead are not crying out against your behavior. O que los muertos no están clamando en contra de tu comportamiento. Crying to God for justice because he they're now in hell. Eh, clamándole a Dios por la justicia porque ellos están ahora en el infierno. Then you don't understand redemption. Entonces no entiendes la redención. Let's go on to the next slide of the summary. A la próxima diapositiva del repaso. In the first part of the parasha, chapter 18. En la primera parte del parasha, en el capítulo 18. Uh, verse 1 through 15. Versículos 1 al 15. You got the uh, Elohim uh, who announces that Sarah will soon have a son. Vemos a Elohim que anuncia que Sarah, Sarah va a tener un hijo. That Abraham sees Jehovah Elohim coming towards him. Que Abraham vio a Jehovah Elohim que venía hacia él. And he runs from his tent. Y él sale corriendo de su tienda. And he meets Elohim, the father, the son, and the Ruach HaKodesh. Y se encuentra con Elohim, el padre, el hijo, y el Ruach HaKodesh. Now we know from Genesis, Bereshit, chapter 12, verse 7. Ahora vemos, de, de, sabemos que desde Genesis, capítulo 12, versículo 7. Yes. Um why he ran to meet him because he already knew him. Eh, porque él salió corriendo a encontrarse con él porque él ya lo conocí, conocía. But why, why do we need the son that's the, uh, the only son? Porque, why, porque ahora necesitamos el hijo, el único hijo. What's the purpose of this passage of this scripture? ¿Cuál es el propósito de, esta, de este pasaje de la escritura? Because we have to have an an only son to take the inheritance porque necesitamos un el, el, el hijo único para tomar la herencia to have that family line para tener esa ese linaje familiar uh, so that messiah would come from that family line para que el mesías vendrá ven, 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 vendrá de esa de ese linaje familiar But why do we need a Messiah? ¿Y por qué necesitamos un Mesías? Because we're a sinful world. Porque somos un mundo pecaminoso. So if you don't understand what sin is, so, entonces si no entiendes qué es el pecado, then you don't understand why we need redemption. Entonces no entiendes por qué necesitamos redención. In the next part of the parasha, en la próxima parte del parasha, in chapter 18, verse 16 to 33, en capítulo 18, versículos 16 al, 10, al 33, Abraham pleads with Jehovah not to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham le, le ruega a Jehovah para que no este, destruya a Sodoma y Gomorra o por la salvación de Sodoma y Gomorra. He pleads for their salvation. Él, él clama o, o, o le ruega por su salvación. He pleads for the sinners. Él, él ruega por los pecadores. And he intercedes with the Lord for those sinful people. Y intercede con el Señor por ese, ese pueblo pecaminoso. But if you don't understand what sin is, Pero si no entiendes qué es el pecado, you don't understand why Jehovah is angry. Entonces no entiendes por qué Jehovah está airado. Okay. So, like I said, here we are in chapter 18. Como dije, aquí estamos en el capítulo 18. We can literally spend hours and hours just talking about these, each one of these topics. Podemos eh, quedarnos aquí por horas en, tras horas este, tocando en estos temas. But you don't understand what the importance of these topics. Pero no entiende la importancia de estos temas. Until you understand Jehovah's why he's angry. Hasta que entiendas el por qué Jehovah está airado o enojado. Why we need redemption. Por qué necesitamos redención. And what sin is y qué es el pecado without you know you're, you're you know what why does he need a son 
¿Por qué él necesita un hijo? Why did, you know, uh, he have relations with Hagar that we por, talked about last, in last week's parasha? ¿Por qué él tuvo relaciones con Hagar? Hagar mm -hmm. eh, el que hablamos tocamos en, eh, la semana pasada en el parasha. And why is Abraham pleading with Jehovah not to destroy these cities? ¿Y por qué Abraham está rogándole a, Ye a Jehová que no destruya estas ciudades. What's wrong with these cities? ¿Qué, es, qué, qué está mal con estos, eh, estas ciudades? Why can't they live the way they, why can't they live the lives they want to live? Porque ellos no pueden vivir las, la vida que ellos quieren vivir. All right, let's go on to the next slide. Vamos a la próxima diapositiva. Now, on this next slide, en esta próxima diapositiva, Lot takes Yeshua and the Ruach into his home. Lot Toma a Yeshua y el Ruach y lo, este, lo, lo lleva a su, a su hogar. En chapter 18, there are three people that Avram bows to. En el capítulo 18, hay tres personajes al, al el cual Abraham se posta ante. Then Avram gives them an offering. Y entonces Abraham le hace una ofrenda. A he makes a meal for them. Él le hace una cena, una comida para ellos. And Only those three men eat, not Avram. Y solo, Abraham. Solo los tres personajes comen, no Abraham. Abraham no come con ellos. So an angel is not going to eat of an offering. Un ángel no va a comer de una ofrenda. The, but the three men eat of the offering. Pero los tres personajes, hombres, comen de la ofrenda. So here... Uh, You can study that part that we have on the website. Tú puedes estudiar esa parte que se encuentra en nuestro sitio web. We have five years of full parasha studies. Tenemos cinco años de, de estudios completos de, de los parasha. But right now for this series of teachings. Pero ahora para esta serie de enseñanzas. On the parasha. En las parasha. We're going to get to one single main Topic. Vamos a tocar en un tema principal. But you still need some of this background summary. Pero necesitas un poco de este repaso para poder okay. entenderlo. Okay, so Lot serves a meal to the Father, the Son, and the Ruach HaKodesh. Lot. Lot. No, not Lot. Abraham. A Abraham. Abraham ser serves a meal to the to Jehovah, the Son. And the Ruach HaKodesh. Abraham recibe una comida al Padre, al Hijo y al Ruach HaKodesh. Then while Abraham is talking to the Father. Y mientras Abraham está hablando con el Padre. About what, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah that's going to come. De la destrucción de Sodoma y Gomorrah que, que ha de venir. Yeshua and the Ruach HaKodesh go to Sodom, the city of Sodom. Yeshua y el Ruach HaKodesh van a la ciudad de Sodoma. And while they're at that city, y mientras están en esa ciudad, Lot, Abraham's nephew, Lot, el sobrino de, de Abraham, the, the Gentile Lot that we learned about in this past Shabbat's lesson, el, el gentil Lot que aprendimos sobre en este último, esta última lección de Shabbat, de Shabbat pasado, He left the house of the promise. Él se salió de la casa de la promesa. And now he's living in Saddam. Y ahora está viviendo en Sodoma. He brings Yeshua and the Ruach into his home. Invita a Yeshua y el Ruach en su casa, a su casa. And then his home gets surrounded and attacked by all the homosexuals. Y entonces su, su casa fue rodeado y atacado por todos los homosexuales. Okay, all the Saddam only had homosexual men. Sodoma, en Sodoma existía solo hombres homosexuales. So homosexuality is nothing new. So la homosexualidad no es nada nuevo. It is a mental disorder. Es una, una des, un desorden mental. And if you have this mental disorder, you can get rid of it. Y si tienes este desorden mental, te puedes deshacer de ella. We're off YouTube now. <laughs> <laughs> nos quitaron de YouTube. So if they take us off YouTube, just go to Periscope. Si nos quitan de YouTube, vaya Periscope. Go to bgmctv.org. Ve a bgmctv.org. 
tv.org and click on the streaming button y, y presiona el botón de, de streaming de and, transmisión vivo and it'll take you to our other stream which is on Periscope y te llevará a, o, a, al otro, a la otra transmisión que se encuentra en Periscope now the homosexuals surround Lot's home ahora los homosexuales rodean la casa de, de Lot They want to have sex with Yeshua and the Ruach HaKodesh. Quieren tener sexo con Yeshua y el Ruach HaKodesh. And uh, they want to gang rape Yeshua and the, and the Ruach. And y, we're going to see this actually stated in chapter 19. Y en el capítulo 19 vemos que se, se dice que ellos quieren todos tener sexo con ellos. But Lot, his, Lot offers up his two daughters to the gay men. Pero Lot le ofrece sus dos hijas a los hombres homosexuales. But because Lot was part of the house of the promise. Pero porque Lot era parte de la casa de la promesa. And Abraham interceded for Lot. Y, y Abraham intercedió por Lot. Lot's family is spared the destruction of the city of Sodom. La familia de Lot. Eh, fue salvada de, de la destrucción de Sodoma. And in chapter 19, verse 1 through 29, y en, cap en el capítulo 19, versículos 1 al 29, Lot's family, la, fa Lot, his wife and his two daughters, la familia de Lot, su esposa y sus dos hijas, escaped the city of Sodom. Eh, se escaparon de la ciudad de, de Sodoma. But Lot's wife was told, everybody was told, don't look back. A, a ellos se les se le fue dicho que no miraran hacia atrás. But Lot's wife couldn't follow the commandment. Pero la, la esposa de Lot no pudo obedecer el mandamiento. See another Gentile that has a problem following the commandments. Otro gentil que tiene problemas <laughs> siguiendo los mandamientos. See what's in store for you Gentiles. Ve lo que le espera a ustedes los gentiles. And remember, they were under grace. <laughs> y acuérdate que ellos estaban bajo la gracia. Uh, so when you don't follow, you should use that on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay. See, when you don't follow the commandment, you turn to salt. Cuando no sigues el mandamiento, te convierte en sal. Okay. Uh, we're going on to the next slide. Vamos a la próxima diapositiva. After Yeshua and the Ruach lead Lot to safety. Después que Yeshua y el Ruach eh, sacan a, lo, a la seguridad. The sinful flesh. Eh, la carne pecaminosa. Takes over Lot's daughters. Se apodera de las hijas de Lot. And eventually it takes over Lot. Y eventualmente se apoderó también de Lot. The daughters get their father drunk. Las hijas eh, eh, emborracharon a su, su padre. And this is better than a novella. Esto es mejor que un soap opera. Okay, this is better than The Guiding Light. Esto es mejor que Contra el Viento y Marea. And the, the acting, just picture the acting. Ah, ah. <laughs> Empieza. Eh, imagínate los actores. And the extreme close-up. <laughs> <laughs> And the music. -da -da! Y la música dramática. So the daughters get their father drunk. So las hijas embriagaron a su padre. And then the older daughter has sex with her father. Y la mayor tuvo eh, relaciones con su padre. And then the next night, Lot gets drunk again. Y la próxima noche, Lot se embriagó nuevamente. And has sex with his younger daughter. Y tuvo relaciones con su hija menor. This is now the end of Lot and his family. Este es el fin de Lot y su familia. But they... they They are people that are cursed from that point on. De ese punto en adelante fueron, fueron un pueblo que fue maldecido. Because those, at least one of those daughter's children are the children of Moab. Eh, eh, uno de los hijos de, it was the younger one, right? Um, not sure, I'm pretty sure it's. I think it was the younger one. Yeah. Eh, eh, uno de los hijos de esas dos hijas de Lot fue la madre de lo, del pueblo de, Mo, Mo, de los Moabitas. Yeah. And this is, a, this is only chapter 19. Y esto es solamente el capítulo 19. There's so much stuff in this parasha. Hay tanta información en este parasha. This could be made into a real good Hollywood movie. Esto se puede convertir en un, una buena película de Hollywood. It would definitely be rated R. Sí. <laughs> And this is in the Bible. Y esto, esto todo se encuentra en la Biblia. Let's go on to the next slide. Vamos a la próxima diapositiva. 
Then we get to chapter 20. Uh, llegamos al capítulo 20. Abraham has still not learned to trust Jehovah Elohim. Y Abraham todavía no ha aprendido a confiar en Jehovah Elohim. And uh, he's afraid that people are going to kill him, so his, his wife gets taken again. So, eh, tiene miedo de que lo van a matar, so la, este, este, le quitan la esposa de nuevo. Abraham once again says a half truth and says that Sarah is his sister. Eh, Abraham nuevamente da una media verdad y dice que, que Sara es su, eh, su hermana. Yes. And that's in chapter 20. 1 through 18. Y eso se encuentra en capítulo 20, versículos 1 al 18. But finally, you know, in chapter 18, Pero finalmente, en el capítulo 18, the father said that Sarah's going to have a baby this time next year. Que es, eh, le, le dijo el padre que Sarah iba a tener un hijo este, en este tiempo, el año que viene. Yitzhak is finally born. The son of the promise is finally born. Yitzhak, el hijo de la promesa, este, al fin nació. Okay. Uh, he is circumcised. Fue circuncidado. And uh, he is weaned off the breast and they had a very big party. Eh, se le, se le, se le este, dejó de, de amamentar y tuvieron una fiesta grande. And then Hagar and Ishmael are sent away from the camp. Hagar y Ishmael fueron despedidos del campo. But then Yeshua meets them in the desert. Pero Yeshua se encuentra con ellos en el desierto. Because he gives a promise. Porque le da una promesa. And then uh, Hagar says, I've seen the face of God. Y Hagar dice que ella ha visto la cara de Dios. And this is only, de Dios. And this is all in chapter 21, verse 1 through 21. Y esto se encuentra en capítulo 21, versículos 1 al 21. And then finally in chapter 22. Y finalmente en el capítulo 22. Jehovah tests Abraham. Jehovah prueba a Abraham. And then he says, um, you know, I want your son to... Yitzhak as an offering. Le, le pide al hijo Yitzhak, a su hijo unigénito, como una ofrenda. And then the ram is caught in the... Y entonces el carnero se, se estaba en, en, en el arbusto. In the sticker book. En el arbusto. Okay. All this is in this parasha. Todo, se, todo eso se encuentra en este parasha. There is so much... Information. Hay tanta información. You know, this last part of chapter 22, it's about redemption. Esta última parte en el capítulo 22, se, se trata de la redención. But you don't understand redemption. Pero no entiendes la redención. Until you understand why you need redemption. Hasta que entiendas el por qué necesitas la redención o ser redimido. You don't understand chapter 18. No entiendes el capítulo 18. Why Jehovah said he came down from heaven, Elohim came down from heaven. ¿Por qué Jehovah bajó del cielo? You don't understand why he destroys Sodom and Gomorrah. No entiendes por qué él destruyó a Sodoma y Gomorra. Since Torah had not been given on paper yet. Porque la Torah todavía no fue escrita en pergamino. Why Jehovah is going to destroy these two Gentile ¿Por qué Jehová iba a destruir estos dos pueblos o estas dos ciudades gentiles? Who were living under grace. Que estaban viviendo bajo la gracia. And who was crying out against them. ¿Y quién estaba clamando en, en, en contra de ellos? Who? Wait. There's only one Jew on the planet yet. Solamente existe un judío o un hebreo en, el plan, en, en la tierra. Now remember we talked about this this past Shabbat. Acuérdate que hablamos sobre esto este último Shabbat. And that will be on our website tomorrow. Y eso se encontrará en nuestro sitio web mañana. So go to bgmctv.org. So ve a bgmctv.org. But here Jehovah is going to destroy this city. Pero aquí Jehová va a destruir esta ciudad. But Abraham interceded for salvation of those cities. Pero Abraham intercedió por la salvación de esas ciudades. And Jehovah said, if I find ten righteous people, I would not destroy those Gentile cities. Y Jehovah dijo que si él encuentra diez justos en esas ciudades, él no lo destruirá. So all this is the summary. 
So todo esto es un repaso. Let's go on to the next slide. Vamos a la próxima diapositiva. The City Gate Bible, Messianic Bible Study. El, la, el estudio bíblico de la puerta de la ciudad. Parasha number four. Parasha número cuatro. Our main concept. El concepto principal. Because you need to understand sin. Porque necesitas entender el pecado. Before you can understand the redemption. Antes que puedas entender la What? redención. Why Jehovah was so mad? ¿Por qué Jehovah estaba tan airado? You have to understand sin. Necesitas entender el pecado. Before you learn how to trust God. Antes de po, po, aprender cómo confiar en Dios. You have to understand sin. Tienes que entender el pecado. Because if He does save you. Porque si él te salva. Do you let the flesh take over once you got salvation. Dejas que la carne se, se apodere de ti después que tienes la salvación. And start living the way the pagans live. Y comenzar a vivir como viven los paganos. Do you get salvation? Recibes la salvación. And then not trust God and his promises. Y no confiar en Dios y sus promesas. Do you finally learn how to trust God? Finalmente aprendes cómo confiar en Dios. Even if he wants to take something that you love the most. Aunque él quiera quitarte algo que tú aprecias o amas tanto. Are you willing to go all the way? Estás dispuesto ir hasta el final. So to understand all these concepts. Para entender todos estos conceptos. You have to understand sin We can understand the rest of the parasha. Necesitas entender el pecado antes de poder entender el resto del parasha. Let's go on to the next slide. Vamos a la próxima diapositiva. The main concept. El concepto principal. Many times, and it is beautiful, wonderful, and amazing. Muchas veces es bello, asombroso y asombroso. We Maravilloso y, y asombroso. We focus on the life of the Messiah. Nos enfocamos en la vida del Mesías. This is good and amazing. Esto es bueno y asombroso. For this is what we call redemption. Porque esto es lo que llamamos redención. But redemption means this. Pero la redención significa esto. That there was some type of sin. Que existía algún cla alguna clase de pecado, alguna so, clase de pecado. So before we can understand the son of the promise. Antes de que podamos entender el hijo de la promesa. In this parasha. En este parasha. We need to comprehend. Necesitamos comprender. Why we need the son of the promise. Por qué necesitamos el hijo de la promesa. Let me say this again. Deja repetirlo. Redemption means that we were sinning. La redención significa que estábamos pecando o en, estábamos en pecado. So before we can understand the son of the promise, en, Isaac, Yitzhak. En, entonces, antes de que podamos entender el hijo de la promesa, Yitzhak. We need to, con, we need to comprehend why we need the son of the promise, Yeshua. Necesitamos comprender por qué necesitamos el hijo de la promesa, Yeshua. The reason is this. La razón es esta. Sin destroys everything. El pecado destruye todo. Let's write that in our notes. Vamos a escribir eso en nuestras notas. Sin destroys everything. El pecado destruye todo. Sin destroys everything. El pecado destruye todo. Sin destroys everything. El pecado destruye todo. So now we're going to go to the next slide. Ahora vamos a la próxima diapositiva. And we're going to start the main part of our study. Y vamos a comenzar la parte principal de nuestro estudio. Okay. We're going to turn to Bereshit, Genesis chapter 18. Vamos a Génesis capítulo 18. And we're going to look at 20, verse 20 through 23. Vamos a leer los versículos del 20 al 23. Genesis 18. Genesis capítulo 18. Verse 20 through 23. Versículos 20 al 23. Jehovah said the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great 
and their sin so serious that I will now go down and see whether their deeds warrant the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. The men turned away from there and, and went towards Saddam, but Abraham remained standing before Jehovah. Abraham approached and said, Will you actually sweep the righteous with the wicked? Will you actually sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Amen? Amen. The two main parts is verse 20 and 23. Las dos partes principales son los versículos 20 y el 23. And the key part of the sentence in, in verse 20 is this. Y la parte clave de este versículo en el, el versículo 20 es este. The outcry against Saddam and Amora is so great and their sin so serious. El clamor en contra de Sodoma y Gomorra es tan grande y, y su pecado tan serio. Now let's think of this about, let's think about this for a moment. Vamos a pensar sobre esto por un momento. Moshe and Aaron are not born yet. Moisés y Aarón todavía no han nacido. Torah has not been written on parchment or paper yet. Eh, la Torah no, 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 no ha sido escrito en pergamino todavía. So, how can Jehovah say their sin is serious? So, ¿cómo es que Jehovah puede decir que su pecado es tan serio? When we don't have the law. Que, que todavía no tenemos la ley. That would be what the Christians call living under grace. Eso sería lo que los cristianos llaman vivir bajo la gracia. But here, Jehovah, who is the Father, the Eternal One, blessed be His glorious name. Pero aquí, Jehovah, el Padre, el Eterno, bendito sea su, su nombre eterno, uh, glorioso. He's saying there's an outcry against these two Gentile city. Él dice que hay un clamor en contra de estos, estas dos ciudades gentiles. Well, we're going to look later on to see who's doing the outcrying. Vamos a ver después quién está haciendo el clamor en contra de estas dos ciudades. Okay. Estas dos ciudades. But there's somebody that's crying against these two cities. Hay alguien que está clamando en contra de estas dos ciudades. It's very important for us to Focus on this next point. Es tan fácil nosotros el poder enfocarnos en este próximo punto. That there's only one Hebrew on the planet. Que solo existe un hebreo en el planeta. Yitzhak has not been born. Yitzhak todavía no ha nacido. Yitzhak's mother Sarah is a Gentile. Y la mamá de, de Yitzhak, Sarah, Sarah, es un gentil. So, Sarah... The, pa the matriarch of our faith would not have citizenship in Israel. <laughs> Sara, la madre de nuestro fe, eh, de nuestra fe, no hubiera este, tenido residencia en Israel. For that fact, Yitzhak, o ciudadanía en Israel, I'm sorry. For that fact, Yitzhak would not have citizenship in modern Israel. Y por ese punto, Yitzhak tampoco sería su se se sería ciudadano de Israel. Her mo his mother was a Gentile. Porque su mamá era gentil. By the rabbi's standard, Sarah would not have citizen. She could not make Aliyah. <laughs> por, por las normas de los rabinos, Sarah no podía ser Aliyah. So, the first and only Hebrew was Abraham. That was el, it. <laughs> el primer y único hebreo era Abraham. But what's important to understand about the destruction of these two cities lo importante de entender sobre la destrucción de estas dos ciudades is that they are gentile cities es que son eh, ciudades gentiles let me say this again de a repetir eso Jehovah's going to destroy two gentile cities Jehovah, living under grace Jehovah va a destruir dos ciudades gentiles que están viviendo bajo la gracia but we have a Jew a Hebrew interceding for these Gentiles. Pero hay, aquí tenemos un Hebreo intercediendo por estos gentiles. In verse 23, en el versículo 23, we have, what does it say there? ¿Qué dice ahí? Abraham approached Jehovah and said, will you actually sweep the righteous with the wicked? Abraham se acercó a Jehovah y le preguntó que si actualmente va a destruir a, a los justos con los malvados. So we have a Hebrew 
interceding for the nations. Aquí tenemos un hebreo intercediendo por las naciones. A Hebrew interceding for the Goyim. Un hebreo intercediendo por los Goyim, por las naciones. Hmm. Jew and Gentile, one in Messiah. Judío y Gentil, uno en el Mesías. You are listening to WTRC Radio. Dot com. <laughs> okay. Están escuchando a WTRCRadio.com. Now, in verse 23, it's very important to understand this part. En el versículo 23 es bien fácil entender esta parte. Abraham asked the Lord. Abraham le pidió al Señor. Because he can't believe that the whole city is an abomination. Él no puede creer que la ciudad entera es una abominación. He can't believe it. Él no lo puede creer. So he says to Jehovah. So le, le dice a Jehovah. Would you actually sweep the righteous away with the wicked? ¿Vas actualmente destruir al justo con el injusto? It's okay. I just seen who it was. But Jehovah says, I'm going to, I came down. Pero Jehovah dijo, yo bajé, yo vine. Bajé del cielo. Because Jehovah investigates even the sinful. Porque Jehovah investiga hasta el pecaminoso. He's seeking, Jehovah seeks the truth. Jehovah busca la verdad. So he says, the outcry has come to my ears. El clamor ha llegado a mis oídos. And it's going to come, Elohim came down. Y Elohim bajó. And we know it's Elohim. Y sabemos que es Elohim. Because that goes back to chapter 18. Eso, eso nos lleva al capítulo Beginning of chapter 18, al comienzo del capítulo 18 when Abraham, Abraham bowed to the three men, cuando Abraham se postró ante los tres personajes and we're positive that one of them is Jehovah, y estamos positivos que uno de ellos es Jehová then he serves the three the meal, y le sirve a los tres la comida humans don't eat from the same offering as Jehovah as Jehovah. Los humanos no comen de la misma ofrenda que come Jehovah. But here, Abraham is interceding. Pero aquí Abraham está intercediendo. And he's saying, but Jehovah says, I'm going to really investigate this matter. Pero Jehovah dice que en verdad voy a investigar este asunto. Let's go on to the next slide. Vamos a la próxima diapositiva. Now, what was going on in those cities? ¿Qué estaba sucediendo en esas ciudades? Hold your place in Genesis. Mantén tu lugar en Génesis. And turn to the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament, the book of Jude. Vamos a, a Brit Hadashah, el Nuevo Testamento, al libro de Judá. Hold your place in Bereshit. Ba, uh, mantén su lugar en Bereshit, en Génesis. And go to the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament, Jude chapter 1. Y vamos a Brit Hadashah, al Nuevo Testamento, a Judas, capítulo 1. Chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. Capítulo 1, versículo 6 y el 7. So we're going to get an understanding what was going on. We, Aquí vamos a recibir un entendimiento de lo que estaba sucediendo. In chapter 19, we're told what was going on in Saddam. En capítulo 19, se nos dice lo que estaba, the what, the, what was happening in Saddam. What was going on in Saddam. Qué estaba sucediendo en Sodoma. But we're going to be told what's going on in both cities from the book of Jude. Pero del libro de Judá vamos a, a ver lo que estaba sucediendo en las dos ciudades. From about people that were living under grace. De, de, la, de, de la gente o de los pueblos que están viviendo bajo la gracia. Gentiles that were living under grace. Los gentiles que estaban viviendo bajo la gracia. So when you tell me don't, we don't need the laws anymore, this is what happened. So, entonces cuando me dices que ya no necesitamos la ley, esto es lo que sucede. Jude chapter 1, verse 6 and 7. Judas capítulo 1, versículo 6 y 7. And the angels that did not keep within their original authority, but abandoned their proper sphere, he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for the judgment of the, for the, judgment of the great day. In Saddam and Amor, 
and the surrounding cities following a pattern like theirs, committing sexual sins and perversions, lie exposed as a warning of the everlasting fire awaiting those who must undergo punishment. So we know from the book of Jude so sabemos del libro, so del libro de Judá, that they were committing sexual sin que estaban cometiendo pecados sexuales and perversion y perversiones. But they were living under grace. Pero estaban bajo la gracia. This proves that the Torah lives inside of all of us. Esto, esto compruebe que la Torah vive dentro de nosotros. Comprueba. Because how can now the Lord came down to investigate? El Señor bajó para investigar. But here, what what would be sexual sin? Que sería el pecado sexual. Well, later on, when the Torah is written, más después cuando se escribe la Torah, he actually writes down what perversion is and what sexual sin is. Él escribe qué es la perversión sexual y qué es el pecado sexual. It's called a term for peace. Se, ya, se llama un término de paz. When God gave us the written Torah, cuando Dios nos dio la Torah escrita, he spoke the Torah to Moshe. Él le habló la Torah a Moisés. It was not written by man. No fue escrito por hombre. The Bible is not written by man. El, la Biblia no fue escrito por el hombre. Especially the Torah. Especialmente la Torah. It was given as a term for peace. Fue entregado como un término de paz. It's a contract. Es un contrato. So you can't say, well, my heart deceived me. Él no puede, porque ahí no puedes decir que mi, mi corazón me engañó. Because it says also in the word that the heart is deceptive. Porque también en la palabra dice que el corazón es engañosa. So God wrote the Torah down for us. El Señor nos escribió la Torah. So that there would be no misunderstanding. Para que no hubiera un malentendido. So here, verse 7, Jude chapter 1, verse 7. Aquí, eh, eh, Judas capítulo 1, versículo 7. And Sodom and Amora and the surrounding cities following a pattern like theirs committing sexual sins and perversions lie exposed as a warning of the everlasting fire awaiting those who must undergo punishment. Amen. Okay? So the angels committed sexual sins. So los ángeles cometieron pecados sexuales. The Nephilim back in Genesis chapter 6. Los Nephilim en, el, en Genesis capítulo 6. Because it says following a pattern like theirs in verse 7. Porque dice en el versículo 7 siguiendo un patrón como los de ellos. In verse 6 it talks about the angels. Y en el versículo 6 habla sobre los ángeles. Now the Nephilim had sex with the humans. Lo, los Nephilim tuvieron sexo con los humanos. Okay, so committing sexual sins and perversion. So cometiendo eh, pecados sexuales y perversiones. Okay, they indulge in gross immorality. Ellos este, se entregaron a una inmoralidad abominable. Because the CJB that I'm reading from here says it's different than other versions. Porque la Biblia completa judía que estamos leyendo aquí lo... lo, lo lo dice de una manera distinta que las otras tra traducciones. See here it says committing sexual sins. Aquí dice cometiendo eh, pecados sexuales. In other translations it says gross immorality. En otras traducciones dice inmoralidades abominables. Perversions is going after strange flesh. Eh, perversión es este, seguir carne, carne extraña. And then when you go into Greek, which we're not going to go into in this study, It tells you what that means. Y si, te, si, si bus, buscas las definiciones en el griego que este, habla mucho sobre esto en este estudio, pero no vamos a entrar en eso ahora. So now we go on to the next slide. Eh, vamos a la próxima diapositiva. Let's go back to Genesis 18. Regresemos a Génesis capítulo 18. Any questions so far? Like on WebEx, you guys can turn your cameras on so I can... See that you're really there. It's like YouTube when you don't have your camera on. Prendan sus cámaras en WebEx para ver que, si, que en verdad están ahí. 
The whole idea is to have like this connection. La idea es tener una conexión, interactuar. Or you can be like the hundred people that we have on Bible study on YouTube. And no puede, nameless, faceless people. No puede ser como la, la, el, eh, la gente, las 100 personas que tenemos en el estudio en YouTube que no se le ven las caras. Okay, so now we're back in Bereshit 18, ahora Genesis regresa, 18. Ahora regresamos a Genesis capítulo 18. Verse 20 and 21. Versículos 20 y el 21. Jehovah said the outcry against Saddam and Amora is so great and their sin so serious that I will go down and see whether their deeds warrant the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. Now, we're focusing now on this section. Nos estamos enfocando ahora en esta sección. On who is crying out. ¿Y quién estaba clamando? Because he, he says, Jehovah the Eternal One, blessed be his glorious name. Aquí dice, Jehovah el Eterno, bendito sea su, su nombre glorioso. He says that the outcry has come up to my ears. Dice que el clamor ha llegado a mis oídos. Can dead people cry out? Eh, ¿Los muertos pueden clamar? Well, hold your place there in Genesis 18. Mantén tu lugar ahí en Genesis 18. And... Turn back to Genesis 4, verse 10. Regresemos a Génesis capítulo 4, versículo 10. Genesis, Bereshit 4, verse 10. Génesis capítulo 4, versículo 10. Can dead people cry out? ¿En los muertos pueden clamar? Your body might be dead, but your soul is not. Tu cuerpo estará muerto, pero tu alma no. Genesis chapter 4, verse 10. Genesis capítulo 4, versículo 10. He said to Cain, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. So can dead people cry out? So los muertos pueden clamar? Even your blood will cry out. Hasta tu sangre va a clamar. So here the blood of Havel that was murdered by his brother. Aquí la sangre de, de, de the blood of Abel que fue asesinado por su hermano was crying out to Jehovah from the ground. Estaba clamándole a Jehovah desde la tierra. So you got to understand that part. Tienes que entender esa parte. When the outcry against Saddam and Amora was hold on a second we got to change batteries. Okay, so in Genesis chapter 4, verse 10. Entonces, en Genesis capítulo 4, versículo 10. Let's read that again. Vamos a leer eso de nuevo. He said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. So it's very important. Es bien importante. That dead people still have voices. Que los muertos todavía tienen voces. That even the blood of Havel was speaking to God. Que hasta la sangre de Abel estaba eh, clamándole a Dios o hablándole a Dios. Your body might be dead, but your soul is not. Tu cuerpo tal vez estera, estará muerto, pero tu alma no. So, with that understanding, hold your place there. Con ese entendi entendimiento, mantén su lugar ahí. Go back to Bereshit 18, verse 20, verse 20. Regresemos a Génesis capítulo 18, versículo 20. And 21. Y 21. Jehovah said the outcry against Saddam and Amor is so great and their sin so serious that I will, know, I will now go down and see whether their deeds weren't the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. So here, the dead were crying out against Saddam and Amor. So aquí los muertos estaban clamándole a Dios eh, eh, contra Sodoma y Gomorra. And don't worry, we'll go to another scripture. No te preocupes que vere, mire, vamos a mirar otra escritura. I was going to go to all four listed, but I think that's way too much. Yo iba a, a revisar los cuatro que anoté aquí, pero creo que es un poco mucho. But for your notes, the references are Bereshit 4, verse 10. Pero para sus notas, las referencias son 
Genesis capítulo 4, versículo 10. Shemot 2, Exodus 2, verse 23 and 24. Exodus capítulo 2, versículos 23 y 24. Shemot 3, Exodus chapter 3, verse 9. Exodus capítulo 3, versículo 9. And Psalm 9, verse 12. Y Salmo capítulo 9, versículo 12. There's other ones, but I just gave you four. Hay más, pero solamente anoté cuatro. So when the Lord's saying, you know, somebody's crying out against you. So cuando el Señor dice que alguien está clamando en contra de ti. We now can prove that dead blood can cry out against the living. Ahora podemos comprobar que la sangre mu eh, muerta puede clamar en contra de los vivos. And they're crying out against the deeds that the living are doing. Y están clamando en contra de los hechos que, lo, que los vivos están cometiendo. And that Jehovah will hear it. Y Jehovah lo va a escuchar. It's an interesting concept. Es un concepto bien interesante. So in this parasha, you can't understand redemption. So en este parasha no puedes entender la redención. Until you understand that your sins, people are crying out against your sins. Hasta que puedas entender que la, la, la gente están clamando en contra de tus pecados. You know, people, a lot of people don't believe in hell until you leave this life. <laughs> Mucha gente no creen en, en el infierno hasta que se despiden de esta vida. And then they're, they're like saying to God, oh, you're real. Y entonces dicen a Dios, oh, eres real. <laughs> well, who, who's that, uh, that atheist that recently died? Que, que, el ateo que te acabó de morir. What was his name? I forgot his name. I know who you're talking about, though. Yeah, he, after he died, he opened his eyes again and said, You're real? Y después que él murió, abrió sus ojos nuevamente y dijo, ¿Eres real? Yeah. ¿Eres verdadero? And, you know, <laughs> then Yeshua said, Get the hell out of my father's house. Oh, abrirá sus ojos. Huh? Okay, abrirá sus ojos. He would open his eyes. Yeah, he's going to... Uh, after he closed his eyes here, Después que él cerró sus ojos aquí, the atheist, whatever ateo, his name is, oh, the, um, the, 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 the paraplegic? Yeah, uh -huh. the quad. Yeah, the... the I, Hopkins. 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 Hopkins? Anthony Hopkins? No, he's... Steve. Steve. I forgot his name. <laughs> Don't worry, God knew his name. No te preocupes, que Dios conoce su nombre. And now they're crying out. Y ahora están clamando. They're crying out against you. Ahora están clamando en contra de ti. Let's go on to the next slide. Vamos a la próxima diapositiva. Let's turn to Exodus, Shemot chapter Verse 9. Vamos, chapter 3, verse 9. Vamos a Éxodo capítulo 3, versículo 9. Exodus, Shemot chapter 3, verse 9. Éxodo capítulo 3, versículo 9. Let's see about this crying out. Vamos a ver este, sobre este clamor. Hawkins. 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 Yeah. Stephen Hawkins. Stephen Hawkins. Yeah, he's uh, <laughs> yeah, he's dead now. He él saw muerto. God. Él está muerto y vio a Dios. All right, now we're in Exodus 3, verse 9. Él es, ahora nos encontramos en Éxodo capítulo 3, versículo 9. Yes, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me. I have seen how terribly the Egyptians oppress them. So in this next reference about crying out. So in esta próxima referencia sobre clamor, o clamar. When the time is right, Cuando el tiempo es correcto, the Lord will then hear the, the cries of the people being oppressed. El, el Señor va a escuchar los, el clamor de las personas que están siendo oprimidos. So, what do we learn from this? De qué, qué aprendemos sobre esto? That the Lord, Jehovah, hears the, the cry of the living que and the dead. Jehovah escucha el clamor de los vivos y de los muertos. So, you can be, you know, People could be crying out against you who are living. Las personas que están vivas pueden clamar en contra de ti. And the dead can be crying out against you. Y también los muertos. It's an interesting concept. Es un concepto bien interesante.
Let's go to the next slide. A la próxima diapositiva. Now let's go back to Bereshit 18. Vamos a regresar a Génesis capítulo 18. Genesis 18, verse 23 to 26. Genesis, 23 to 26. Génesis capítulo 18, versículos 23 al 26. That's something stuck. Lamb was good, but a little stringy. <laughs> Kosher lamb. Mm. Passover, getting ready for Passover. 23 to 26, 23 to 26, Abraham approached and said, Will you actually sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Maybe there are 50 righteous people in the city. We actually sweep the place away and not forgive it for the sake of 50 righteous. For there, far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous along with the wicked, so that the righteous and the wicked are treated alike. Far be it from you, shouldn't the judge of all the earth do what is just? Jehovah said, if I find in Saddam 50 who are righteous, then I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Let's go on to the next slide. Vamos a la próxima diapositiva. Let's focus now on verse 25 and 26. Vamos a enfocarnos ahora en, en versículos 25 y 26. Far be it from you to do such a thing to kill the righteous along with the wicked so that the righteous and the wicked are treated alike. Far be it from you, shouldn't the judge of all the earth do what is just? Jehovah said, and if I find in Saddam 50 who are righteous, then I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Okay. Now the key about this part of the parasha Ahora, la clave sobre esta parte del parasha is if he finds righteousness. Es si él encuentra just, justos o justicia. Okay, now if he's looking for righteousness, si él está buscando justicia, then there is also wickedness. También existe la, eh, eh, el, la, eh, la maldad. Thank you. But the Torah is not written. Pero la Torah no está escrita todavía. And there's only one Hebrew on the planet. Y solo existe un hebreo en, en la tierra. So Jehovah's going to judge the Gentiles, whether they're righteous or wicked. Y Jehovah va a juzgar a los gentiles, sean justos o mal, malvados. This is a hard concept for a lot of people. Esto es un concepto difícil para mucho, mucha gente. Especially when they say the Gentiles are not under the covenant. Especialmente cuando dicen que los gentiles no están bajo del pacto. Evidently they are. Evidentemente si lo está, si lo son. Because Jehovah says I'm gonna, you know, Abraham is saying, would you, there's, would you kill the whole city if they're, if they're 50 righteous? Eh, eh, Abraham le, le dice a Dios que si él destruirá la ciudad si encuentra 50 justos. 50 righteous Gentiles. 50 gentiles justos. Let me say that again. Déjame repetir eso. 50 righteous Gentiles. 50 gentiles justos. But there's got to be a difference between righteousness and wickedness. Pero tiene que haber una diferencia entre justicia y Y maldad. And Messiah had not come yet. Y el Mesías no ha llegado o no ha venido todavía. Very interesting concept. <laughs> Un concepto bien interesante. No got too many places teaching this. <laughs> no hay muchos lugares enseñando esto. We're under grace. Estamos bajo la gracia. Yeah, well, let's see how that worked for Saddam and Gomorrah. Vamos a ver cómo eso le funcionó a Saddam y Gomorrah. Right? But Jehovah's going to investigate. Pero Jehovah va a investigar. And he's got, the Father's got his standards. Y el Padre tiene sus normas. Sus normas. The Father has... He's going to investigate on his standards. Él va a investigar bajo sus normas. 
And if the father says in Malachi chapter 3 verse 6, y si el padre dice en Malaquías capítulo 3 versículo 6, I don't change. Yo no cambio. And he gave us the Torah so the terms for peace were written down. Y nos dio la Torah so los términos de paz fue escrito. And you think you could do whatever you want? Y tú piensas que puede hacer lo que quieras? You might want to look at Sodom and Gomorrah. Tal vez quiera mirar a Sodoma y Gomorrah. Because what did it say in, in the book of Jude? ¿Qué fue lo que dijo en el libro de Judá? Jude 1 Judas. verse 7. Judas capítulo 1 versículo 7. It said, well, hold your place there, Genesis. Turn back to Jude 1, 7. Mantén tu lugar ahí en Genesis y vamos a mirar a Judá, eh, Judas. Eh, uno, capi, capítulo 1, versículo 7. Jude 1, 7. Yehuda. <laughs> Yehuda, capítulo 1, versículo 7. And Saddam and Amora and the surrounding cities followed a pattern like theirs committing sexual sins and perversion lie exposed as a warning of the everlasting fire waiting those who must undergo punishment. Amen. So now we go back to Bereshit, Genesis 18. Ahora regresamos a Genesis capítulo 18, versículo 20. Jehovah says, I'm, if I capítulo, fought... Capítulo 18, versículo 25, right? Yeah, 25. Versículo Genesis 25. Genesis 18, 25. He says, if I find 50 righteous... Él, dice, él dijo que si encuentro 50 justos... I won't destroy this Gentile city. No voy a destruir esta ciudad gentil. If I find 50 righteous Gentiles... Si encuentro 50 gentiles... And I'm personally, he says, going to investigate. Y él dice que yo personalmente voy a investigar. You got to understand this concept before understanding redemption. Tienes que entender este concepto antes de entender la redención. Going on to the next slide. En la próxima diapositiva. Does God investigate thoroughly? ¿Será que Dios investiga completamente? Hold your place there in Bereshit. Mantén tu lugar ahí en Bereshit, en Genesis. We're going to turn to Devarim 13, Deuteronomy 13, verse 15 and 16. Vamos a Deuteronomio, capítulos, capítulo 13, versículos 15 y 16. Deuteronomy 13, verse 15 and 16. Hold your place in Genesis. Deuteronomio, capítulo 13, versículos 15 y 16. Mantén tu lugar en Genesis. Mantengan sus lugares en Genesis. If you just put cassia and hyssop on your face, it'll do the place of the mask. The anointing oils do the better than the mask. Cassia y sopo es mejor que la máscara. En tu Got cara. somebody from Wuhan over here on the WebEx. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Dude, <laughs> You must have got that at H Mart. <laughs> you know, I was in I was in Florida and and the masks were they flew off the shelves of Home Depot, Lowe's, and Walmart. They were gone. Just get the anointing oils. Yeah. Cassia and hyssop. Back to this about investigation. Then you are to investigate the matter, inquiring and searching diligently. If the rumor is true. If it is not confirmed that such detestable things are being done among you, that such detestable things are being done among you, you must put the inhabitants of the city to death, which, with the sword, destroying it completely, with the sword, everything in it, including the livestock. So here in Devarim, aquí en Deuteronomio, 13, he's giving us a law for investigation for ourselves. Él no está dando la ley para investigar, para, para nosotros poder investigar. Okay, he's telling us that we have to search, search diligently. Él está diciendo que temo, tenemos que investigar dil con diligencia. And then he says, if the detestable things are being done, Si las cosas 
detestables o abominables están siendo cometidos o hechos. That the inhabitants of the city have to be killed. Que los, este, habitantes. los habitantes de la ciudad tienen que ser puestos a la muerte. So the Lord gives us the law. So el Señor nos da la ley. So he's going to follow his own law. So él va a seguir su propia ley. But after a thorough investigation. Pero después de una investigación completa. Okay. So if he's telling us to do it, he's going to do it himself. So si él no está diciendo que tenemos que hacerlo nosotros, él lo va a hacer él mismo. So here Jehovah's going to investigate the Gentiles on the same law that he's going to investigate the Hebrews. So aquí eh, Jehovah va a investigar a los gentiles con la misma ley que él, él va a investigar a los hebreos. So one law for the Jew and the Gentile. So una misma ley para el judío y el gentil. No matter where you live. No importa donde mores. Because Saddam and Amor were not in Israel, right? Porque Sodoma y Gomorra no estaban en Israel, ¿verdad? Huh? Now it's in Tel Aviv. Now it's in Tel Aviv. <laughs> no, because it's a very important point. Es un punto bien importante. Because we used to have some congregant members. Porque teníamos algunos congregantes. That believe the rabbis where you only have to do this the law when you're in Israel even though Leviticus 23 says no matter where you live. Que les creían a los rabinos que decían que la ofrenda solamente se hace en Israel, pero la palabra nos dice que se hace no importa donde vivas. Mm -hmm. So here Sodom and Gomorrah were not in Israel. So aquí Sodom y Gomorra no estaban en Israel. And he's going to destroy these Gentile cities. Y él va a destruir estos, estas ciudades gentiles. Let's go to the next slide. Vamos a la próxima diapositiva. Let's go to Genesis 19 now. Vamos a Genesis capítulo 19 ahora. So now in, in the parasha, Abraham has worked it all the way down to 10 people. So ahora en el parasha, Abraham ha... Uh, uh, Llegado a 10 personas de, de los 50. Jehovah says if I find 10 righteous Gentiles. Jehovah dijo si encuentro 10 gentiles justos. Because remember there's no only one Hebrew. Porque acuérdate que solamente existía un hebreo. I'm not going to destroy the city. Yo no voy a destruir la ciudad. But he doesn't find 10 righteous. Pero él no encuentra 10 justos. So now Yeshua and the rock HaKodesh go over to... To Saddam. So ahora Yeshua y el Ruach HaKodesh van en camino a Saddam. And it says angels. Y dice ángeles. Then it says men. Entonces dice hombres. But remember, they ate the offering. Acuérdate que ellos comieron de la ofrenda. Man is not going to eat the same offering that was given to Jehovah. El, Jehovah. el hombre no va a comer de la misma ofrenda que se le da a Jehovah. The only people that are going to eat the offering is the Godhead, Elohim. Los únicos que van a comer de la ofrenda es la naturaleza de Dios, Elohim. Remember, the angel came to Samson's parents, Shimshon's parents. Acuérdate que el ángel vino a los parientes de Shimshon o de Sansón. He didn't eat the offering. Y él no comió. Él no comió la ofrenda. Okay. He went up in the flame. Él subió en la llama. Okay. So now we're in Genesis, Bereshit, chapter 19, verse 4 through 7. Ahora nos encontramos en Génesis, capítulo 19, versículos 4 al 7. But before they could go to bed, the men of the city surrounded the house, young and old, everyone from every neighborhood of Saddam. They called Lot and said to him, Where are the men who came to stay with you tonight? Bring them out to us. We want to have sex with them. Lot went out to them and stood in the doorway, closing the door behind him, and said, Please, my brothers, don't do such a wicked thing. It's very important, this part. Es bien importante esta parte. Go back to verse 4. Regresemos al versículo 4. Before they could go to bed, the men of the city surrounded the house, young and old, everyone from every neighborhood in Saddam. Every man in that city was Ca a homo. Cada hombre de esa ciudad era un homosexual. 
Every one of them had a mental disorder. Cada uno de ellos tenían una desorden mental. So they surround Lot's house. So rodean la casa de Lot. And they want everything of the flesh. Y quieren todo de la carne. Let's look at verse 5. Vamos a mirar el versículo 5. Well, let's first start with, before we go to verse 5 and 4 and 5 again, let's go to verse 7. Antes de leer el, el, los versículos 4 y 5, nuevamente vamos a mirar el versículo 7. And said, please, my brothers, don't do such a wicked thing. Y dijo, hermanos míos, les ruego, no obren perversamente, les dijo Lord. What would be a wicked thing? ¿Qué sería algo perverso? Since the law is not written. Como la ley todavía no está escrita. Since we're living under grace. Como estamos viviendo bajo la gracia. You can't understand redemption. No puedes entender la redención. Until you first understand what sin is. Hasta que entiendas lo que es el pecado. Let me say that again. Deja repetir eso de nuevo. You can't understand why Yeshua the Messiah came. No puedes entender el por qué Yeshua el Mesías vino. And understand the redemption of the son of the promise. Hasta que entiendas y no puedes entender la redención del hijo de la promesa. In, in, until you first understand what a wicked thing is. Hasta que primero puedas entender que es una cosa perversa. That's why there's so much information in parasha number four, Bayera. Por eso que hay tanta información en este parasha de, de Bayera. But you need to understand this main concept first. Pero necesitas entender este concepto principal primero. Without understanding that Lot was telling the other men that they're wicked. Sin entender el por qué Lot le dijo a, la, a los otros hombres que eran perversos. And God said, I'm going to investigate. Y Dios dijo, voy a investigar. And he said, if I find righteous, ten righteous people, I won't destroy this Gentile city. Y dijo, si encuentro a diez justos, no destruirá, destruiré esta ciudad. So this proves that the law is in our heart. Y esto comprueba que la ley existe en nuestros corazones. Everybody understanding this. Eh, ¿Entienden esto? Getting it? Are you understanding it? Okay. So now let's go back to verse 5. Vamos a regresar al versículo 5. They called Lot and said to him, Where are the, are the men who came to stay with you tonight? Bring them out to us. We want to have sex with them. Okay. Y So in verse number five, so in el versículo cinco, they're wanting to gang rape these two, what they think are men. Quieren tener orgía con estos dos que, que ellos piensan que son hombres. It's exactly what's going on in the world today with es, the homos. Es exactamente lo que está ocurriendo hoy en día en el mundo con los homosexuales. But let's not even go there with the discussion. Pero ni, ni, ni entremos ahí en la discusión. Let's just look at verse 5 and how disgusting that is. Vamos a mirar el versículo 5 y mirar lo repugnante que es esto. They were all part of the, the flesh. Todo eran parte de la carne. See, when you allow your flesh to take over. Cuando tú permites que tu carne se apodere. And you don't want to listen to God's commandments. Y no quieres escuchar los mandamientos de Dios. Your flesh is able, is willing to do just about anything. Tu carne está dispuesto a hacer cualquier cosa. Casi when, cualquier cosa. When we looked at verse 4. Cuando miras el versículo 4. And this really plays out into what's going on in our society today. Y esto describe lo que está sucediendo en nuestra sociedad hoy en día. Look at verse number four. Miremos al versículo cuatro. Before they could go to bed, the men of the city surrounded the house, young and old, every, everyone from every neighborhood in Saddam. Why do they want to teach about sexuality to kindergartners? ¿Por qué ellos quieren enseñarle a, a los niños de, de kinder eh, sobre el eh, sexo? The California curriculum. El currículo de California. 
which is also now in New Jersey, que también eh, se ve aquí en, en New Jersey, is to teach sexuality, homosexuality, es enseñar la sexualidad y homosexualidad to kindergartners. a los niños de kinder. In New York State, it's even worse. En el estado de Nueva York es aún peor. Why? ¿Por qué? You're seeing it here in verse 4. Lo está viendo aquí en el versículo 4. And here, verse 7 says, don't do such a wicked thing. Y aquí en el versículo 7 dice que no hagas eh, algo tan perverso. Go to the next slide. Vamos a la próxima diapositiva. Let's go to verse 12 and 13 now. Vamos a mirar versículos 12 y 13 ahora. The man said to Lot, Do you have any people here besides yourself? Whoever you have in the city, son-in-law, your sons, your daughters, bring them out of this place, because we are going to destroy it. Jehovah has become aware of the great outcry against them. And Jehovah has sent us to destroy it. Let's read verse 13 again. Vamos a leer el versículo 13 nuevamente. Because we are going to destroy it. Jehovah has become aware of the great outcry against them. And Jehovah has sent us to destroy it. So here, Jehovah is already aware of the outcry. Aquí ya Jehovah está eh, al tanto de, de, del llanto, de, de, del clamor. Remember we did those two scriptures. Acuérdate que es, eh, leímos esas dos escrituras. The dead can make an outcry against the living. Eh, los muertos pueden clamar en contra de los vivos. Because... Abel's blood was crying out to God. Porque la sangre de Abel estaba clamándole a Dios. When there's an outcry against you. Cuando hay un clamor en contra ti. This is a big part of the lesson. Esto es una parte mayor de la lección. The outcry of your sin. El clamor de tu pecado. Leads to destruction. Lleva, te lleva a la destrucción. Let me say this again. Deja repetir esto. See, if you don't do anything about the sin in your own life, si no haces nada sobre el pecado en tu propia vida, you might have dead people crying out, saying, look what you're doing. Tal vez a, a, habrán muertos clamando en contra de ti, diciendo, mira lo que le está haciendo. Because Havel, Abel's blood was crying out to God. Porque la sangre de Abel estaba clamando a Dios. And once Jehovah becomes aware of the outcry against you, y cuando Jehovah está al tanto del clamor que está en contra de ti, but the Gentiles are not under the law. Pero los gentiles no están bajo la ley. Evidently, they are. Evidentemente, sí lo están. So anybody who says that the Gentiles are not under law has not read Genesis chapter 19, verse 13. So aquellos, aquellos que dicen que los gentiles no están bajo la ley no han leído Génesis 19, capítulo, eh, versículos 12 y 13. Let's look at verse 13 again, please. Vamos a mirar el versículo 13 nuevamente. Because we are going to destroy it. Jehovah has become aware of the great outcry against them, and Jehovah has sent us to destroy it. Amén. Who's he? He's not destroying Tel Aviv él no está, right now. Él, él ahorita no está destruyendo a Tel Aviv. He's going to. Él lo va a destruir. Because Zechariah 13 says so. Porque Zacarías 13 lo dice. Verse 9. Versículo 9. Two thirds of the Jews are going to die this time. Dos tercios de los judíos van a morir esta vez. And it's because of this type of sin. Y es por este, esta, clase, este, esta clase de pecado. When God wants When God takes his hand of protection away. Cuando Dios quita su mano de protección. So here. So aquí. He's going. It's very important to understand this. Es bien importante. Es bien importante entender esto. Because. Jehovah is going to destroy a Gentile city. Porque Jehovah va a destruir una ciudad gentil. That's under grace. Que está bajo la gracia. 
And people get mad at me because I teach the law to y, everybody. Y la gente se enoja conmigo porque yo le enseño la ley a todos. And many Messianic congregations don't tell the, gen, tell the Gentiles you don't have to follow. Y muchas congregaciones mesiánicos le dicen a los gentiles que no tienen que seguir la ley. We're not even going to get into replacement theology. No vamos a entrar ni a la teología de reemplazo. But it's very clear here in this parasha. Pero es bien claro aquí en este parasha. Is that their fate has been sealed. Es que su fin ha sido sellado. Because of their actions. Por sus acciones. And then when you go to Revelation 20 verse 12. Y cuando entras a Revelaciones capítulo 20 versículo 12. Where it says your actions are going to be weighed. A donde dice que tus acciones va a ser pesado. O medido. So the outcry leads to your destruction. So el clamor lleva a tu destrucción. Let's go to the next slide. Vamos a la próxima diapositiva. I think I went a little too quick. I only got... These studies, I, I try not to make... The, them go into two parts. Yo trato de no llevar estos estudios en dos partes. Let's go to verse 23 to 25 now. Vamos a versículos 23 a, y el, al 25. By the time Lot had come to Zoar, the sun had risen over the land. Then Jehovah caused sulfur and fire to rain down upon Saddam and Amorah. From Jehovah out of the sky. He overthrew those cities, the entire plain, all the inhabitants of the cities, and everything growing in the ground. Amen? Amen. Let's look at verse 25. Vamos a mirar el versículo 25. He overthrew those, in, those cities, the entire plain, all the inhabitants of the cities and everything growing in the ground. If you haven't underlined verse 25, you might want to underline it. Si no han subrayado el versículo 25, les sugiero que lo subrayen ahora. Now why do you want to underline it? ¿Y por qué lo quieren subrayar? Because it says all the inhabitants Porque dice, Todos los habitantes. were destroyed because their actions were wicked. Fueron destruidos porque sus acciones eran perversos. How many Hebrews were living in that, or Jews were living in that city? ¿Cuántos hebreos o judíos estaban viviendo en, es, en esas ciudades? Zero. Zero. How many Gentiles were living in that city? ¿Cuántos gentiles estaban viviendo en, es, en esas ciudades? 100%. 100%. In the two cities, how many in Sodom and Gomorrah? In Sodoma y Gomorrah. How many Hebrews were living in those two cities? ¿Cuántos hebreos existían en esas dos ciudades? Zero. Zero. But I thought we only had to follow the law for in Israel. Eh, yo pensé que solamente teníamos que seguir la ley cua, si, cuando estuvi, estuviéramos en Israel. Evidently not. Evidentemente no. I thought only the Jews had to follow the law. Pensé que solo los judíos tenían que seguir la ley. Evidently not. Evidentemente no. So when you're, you're sinning against, and you call yourself a follower of Messiah. Cuando estás este, pecando y te, ya, te, te hace pasar por un, un seguidor de Mesías. You make the cross a mockery. Hace este, burlas de, de la cruz. When you say you can eat whatever you want. Cuando dices que puedes comer lo que quieras. And Jehovah said in Leviticus 11, no you can't. Y Jehovah nos dijo en Levíticos capítulo 11 que no, no podemos. This is your terms for peace. Estos son tus términos de paz. Your actions are going to be investigated by Jehovah. Tus acciones van a ser investigado por Jehovah. Even if you're a Gentile. Aunque seas gentil. Now remember what Lot said. Ahora acuérdate lo que dijo Lot. My brothers 
Don't do such a wicked thing. Hermanos míos, no, haga, no hagan cosas tan perversas. My Gentile brothers. Mis hermanos gentiles. Don't do such a wicked thing. No hagan cosas tan perversas. Then let's see who destroyed the city. Vamos a ver quién destruyó la ciudad. Let's go back to la verse ciudad. 24. Regresemos al versículo 24. Then Jehovah caused sulfur and fire to rain down on the Gentile cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. I think you should write that in your Bible. Yo creo que debe de escribir eso en tus Biblias. Draw an arrow in the margin and write Gentile cities. En el margen, eh, dibujen una flecha y pongan ciudades gentiles. So that when somebody says the Gentiles don't have to follow the law, para que cuando alguien diga que los gentiles no tienen que seguir la ley, if the father says he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, si el padre dice que él es el mismo hoy, ayer, hoy, para siempre, who rained down fire on these two Gentile cities? Quién hizo llover fuego sobre estas dos ciudades gentiles? The father. El padre. And this is before the written, before the priesthood of the Kohanim. Y esto fue ma, muchos, mucho más antes que el sacerdocio y los Kohanim. And the church will say, well, Jesus changed it all. Y la iglesia dirá que Jesús lo cambió todo. I thought Jesus ate the offering in Genesis 18. Yo pensé que Jesús comió de la ofrenda en, en Génesis capítulo 18. I thought he and the Father are one. Yo pensé que él y el Padre son uno. Who destroyed the cities? ¿Quién destruyó las ciudades? Says Jehovah, the Eternal One. Ahí dice Jehovah, el Eterno. Bendito sea su nombre. When your actions speak louder than your words. Cuando tus acciones hablan más fuerte que tus uh, palabras. Then God will investigate. Entonces Dios va a investigar. Let's go to the next slide. Vamos a la próxima diapositiva. Let's look at verse 27 to 29. Vamos a mirar el versículo 27 al 29. 19. Okay. Genesis capítulo 19, versículo 27 al 29. Genesis chapter 19, verse 27 to 29. Abraham got up early in the morning, tripped over the chair, went to the place where he had stood before Jehovah, and looked out towards Saddam and Amora, scanning the entire plain. There before him the smoke was rising from the land like the smoke from a furnace. But when Elohim destroyed the cities of the plain, he remembered Abraham and sent Lot out, away from the destruction, when he overthrew the cities in which Lot lived. Let's look at verse 29 again. Veamos al versículo 29 otra vez. This is a great lesson for those that really follow Yeshua. Esta es una gran lección para aquellos que siguen a Yeshua. Because Jehovah is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Porque Jehovah es el mismo ayer, hoy y siempre. But when Elohim destroyed the cities of the plain, he remembered Abraham and sent Lot out, away from the destruction, when he overthrew the cities in which Lot lived. Here the key to verse 29. Aquí está la clave en el versículo 29. Is a ch Lot got a chance at salvation. Es que lo tuvo, tuvo una oportunidad para la salvación. Now listen up carefully. Ahora escuchen. Lot got a chance at salvation. But one, one. I'll say that again. Not going to stop it saying. Lot got a chance at salvation. Lot tuvo una oportunidad de salvación. Because of somebody else. Por causa de alguien más. Lot got a second chance. Lot tuvo una segunda oportunidad. Because of the righteousness of somebody else. Por la justicia de alguien más. 
That is a great lesson. Esa es una gran lección. And that's why I said at the beginning of this lesson. Y por eso es que dije al comienzo de esta lección. That you have to understand sin. Que tienes que entender el pecado. To understand salvation. Para poder entender la salvación. Because we got, a, we got a, mm -hmm. We got another chance at life. Porque tenemos una oportun una, una otra oportunidad en la vida. Because of somebody else's righteousness. Por causa de la, de la justicia de alguien más. Let me say that again. Déjame decirla otra vez. We got another chance at life. Tenemos otra oportunidad de vida. At least it didn't get on your pants this time. Yeah, right. Let me say that again. Déjame repetirlo otra vez. Those of us who believe in Messiah. Aquellos que creen en el Mesías. We got another chance at life. Tenemos otra oportunidad en la vida. You get another chance at salvation. De tener otra oportunidad de salvación. Because of somebody else's righteousness. Por la justicia o, o de, de otra persona. One of the questions that we got over here. Una de las preguntas que tenemos aquí. Once you accept Yeshua, the outcry stops. The answer is yes. Una vez que, que aceptas a Yeshua, pararía la, la, el clamor y la respuesta es sí. But then... Yeshua says, go sin no more. Pero ahí Yeshua es cuando dice, ve y no peques más. This is why you have to follow the Torah. Por esta razón es que tienes que seguir la Torah. Because it's the terms for peace. Porque son términos de paz. So, Lot got another chance at life. A Lot se le dio otra oportunidad en la vida. Because of his uncle Abraham. Por causa de su tío Abraham. But then, after that second chance. Pero después de esa segunda oportunidad. He got saved from the city. He got saved from the city. Él sal fue salvado, sacado de la ciudad. But then he sinned with his daughters. Pero después pecó con sus hijas. So now there's no more. Y ahora ya no existe. There's only so many chances that you get. Solo hay pocas oportunidades que tú obtienes. Because then you're just irresponsible. Porque entonces ahí tú eres irresponsable. Now, you can come back. Tú puedes regresar. But God knows your heart. Pero Dios conoce en tu corazón. As I was teaching the children this morning. Como les enseñé a los niños esta mañana. God hears your thoughts. Dios escucha tus pensamientos. He knows what you're thinking. Él sabe lo que piensas. Remember in the beginning of chapter 18. Recuerda en el principio del capítulo 18. It said Sarah laughed to herself. Dice que Sara se rió en, uh, así, uh, se rió. When she found out she was going to be pregnant at 80 or older. Cuando ella escuchó que iba a estar embarazada en la edad que tenía. And God heard what she thought. Y Dios escuchó lo que ella uh, pensaba. But the key to this part is on our last slide here. La, la clave de esto, vamos a verlo en esta última uh, diapositiva. Lot got another chance because of somebody else. Que Lot recibió otra, otra oportunidad a causa de alguien. Now was Abraham perfect? Era Abraham perfecto? He wasn't really good just yet. He wasn't, eh, really, good, he wasn't really good just yet. Él aún no era, no era completamente bueno. Because right, right after this, he's going to give his wife away again. Porque después de esto ocurre otra situación con su esposa otra vez. But it said, Jehovah remembered Lot, or Elohim remembered Lot. Pero vemos aquí como Elohim recordó a Lot. Before he destroyed the city. Después de que destruyó la ciudad. So you can't understand redemption. Entonces tú no puedes entender la redención. And waiting on promises. Y, y esperar en las promesas. 
until you first understand that you may be destroyed in a moment's notice. Hasta que tú no entiendas que puedes tú des ser destruido en cualquier momento. In the twinkling of an eye, you could lose everything. En, abri en un abrir y cerrar de ojos puedes perderlo todo. And you Gentiles, I think you can live your life any way you want because you're under grace. Y si los gentiles piensan que pueden vivir su vida como ellos les dé la gana porque están bajo la gracia. Evidently, you're under same laws as the Hebrews. Evidentemente, estás bajo la misma ley que los hebreos. It's just a covenant that's with Abraham to be the teacher. En este pacto es para Abraham que ser el maestro. The, the covenant is with Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. El pacto fue con Abraham, Yaakov. Say it again. El pacto fue hecho con Abraham, Yitzhak, y Yaakov. But the blessing and curses are for all people. Pero la bendición y las maldiciones son para todo la, todos los pueblos. Going on to the next slide, that's the last part of our study. Esta es la última parte de nuestro estudio. Any questions, comments? Preguntas o comentarios? No questions or comments? No preguntas y no comentarios. All right. Let's close with some prayer. Cerremos con oración. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings because you are the same to Hebrew and Gentile. You're the same to all people, and you expect righteousness out of all of us. So you sent your son Yeshua to show us how to live our lives so that we would have no excuse for sin. Let us learn from this parasha that there is chastisement for breaking the law for both Jew and Gentile. In your name Yeshua and everybody said, Amen. Shalom a todo. Shalom. This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to The Remnant's Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, bethgoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y. I am org and click on the donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnants Call. If you have not taken your first steps to be born again, just ask God's help. Remember, it's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us, and He's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let Him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait any longer. Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles, living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture, truly the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, 
come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend the day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word, not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our king's word. We close this Shabbat together with a reading of the new week's parasha. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, Many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and biblical holy day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, YESHUA. Shalom.